CATV is proudly presented by Toyota. Darren, I imagine you're not doing handstands after that last session, but is there part of you that thinks it could have been far worse than it was? It could have been if they probably took a, a couple of chances. So, uh, yeah, it was. look, they bowled very well. Give them some credit there. I think the wicket's still very good, and we probably helped to a couple of dismissals. Um, end of the day, we've got to be better in those tough situations. I know it was a, a long day in the field with 150-odd overs, but end of the day, we've got to be better at uh, you know, restricting the, the wicket column. Uh, pleased we got 112 runs. Certainly the game's going forward when we're batting. Um, but yeah, disappointed with the, the wicket loss. Yeah. Was there a bit of a sense today that you know, the cricket was very slow and the pitch wasn't giving you a whole lot and almost like the game wasn't really going anywhere and then all of a sudden you're out batting we're not caught on the hop. Uh, you know you're going to bat at some stage. Uh, end of the day, we've, we've got to get better in those situations. You know, last 25 overs, as I said, the pleasing thing is we're 112. So the game is moving forward quite quickly now. Um, end of the day, we've got to bat really well tomorrow uh, and keep them out in the field most of the day. So a good opportunity, it's a good wicket. So someone's got to stand up and make some runs. A bit of a concern about you know, going with the three seamers and them having to do so much work in that first innings. That's probably what you didn't want to happen, isn't it, with the selection decision? Um, oh, you don't want to bowl 150 overs in any test match, do you? So, uh, at the end of the day, uh, once you get past 150 overs, well, you know, teams are normally 500, 600. So, we managed to keep them down to, what, 423. So, that was a pleasing effort from our bowlers, I thought, uh, on, on a wicket that was pretty good. So. Until we finish our batting, you know, tomorrow or whenever that may be, we'll know we'll have a better idea how good that was. I'm not worried about that. It's a test match. You're going to have loads, and it's just the way it is. You're playing a test match, so you can't really worry about that or we'll look too far ahead. Only live in the present. So, uh, you know, I thought that Nathan did a really good job. Obviously, starting to turn a little bit the wicket, and he threw himself to the captain and Smith as well to bowl some extra overs. So, no dramas there. The game did move forward really quickly. Was that sort of instruction from you to go out and try and push for a result eventually? Or was that just the way the guys found the pitch? Uh, you mean David Warner tonight? Oh, that's why he plays. We're happy with that. And the rest of the guys? Well, we'd like him to still be there. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the, the, you know, the couple of good balls, as I said, and a couple of, you know, not great shots. So. That happens in the game career. The, the challenge for our group tomorrow is to come back, and we've been in that situation in the last few test matches. So, you know, we know what we need to do, and we have to do it better than we did tonight. Coach, was there any sense that the pitch seemed a bit of a different pitch when South Wales bowling? Did you really like that? It seemed to jump around a bit of a bit of swing. No, it looks pretty good to me, um, but I'm not out there batting, and I'm too old to bat against those bowlers. So, uh, look, I, I think we made some mistakes. Um, but as the ball gets older, I think you'll see that the wickets stay pretty true. So it's going to be a good track. Uh, the spread of scores so far has been sort of 10 or less or 50 or more. Is that the sort of pitch it is? That once you pick up the pace of it, there's not much that you can get past you? I think so. Once you get in and get through, that's going to be the key for all the batters. Um, both sides have showed that already. So, um, you know, we'd like a lot more scores over 10 for a start. Um, but once you get in, I, I think you can really make some inroads into the score. Darren, the, the pace of attack and bowled less than half the overs today, Michael's choosing obviously. But why do you think that was when we saw how much success South Africa had later on? Oh, well, they had 25 overs to bowl, didn't they? So they went at it pretty hard. Um, that's always going to happen when you uh, bowl for five sessions. You can't expect all your quicks to bowl all the time. So. Nathan Lyon did a really good job getting Pfeiffer, really pleased for him, um, and that's just the way it worked out today. How much work did you put in this study in um, Parnell, and what did you make of him, I suppose, particularly that first over? Yeah, first over, he got a couple of balls in the right area, didn't he, which can happen. So, yeah, we've seen him before, and most of the blokes have played him either in IPL or other tournaments, so we've seen him a bit. Uh, four for 98, I think that's the fifth, first of his batting collapse in six test matches. Um, what are you guys going to try and do? Are you going to keep shuffling the order? Or is Chris Rogers on the, in trouble? Tracing the bigger scores? Oh, uh, you know, we'd love more first in his runs. And we always, I've spoken to you about it, Malcolm, and everyone in the room at various stages. So that's what we need to do to get better as a cricket side. And that's probably the issue we've had in those test matches. And we know we've 
got out of trouble with someone like Brad Haddon in, in the previous ones, and then obviously Marsh and Doolan or Marsh and Smith last test match. So we've got to get some better output from our top order. We know that. Jesse, I know that um, Harris and Johnson didn't bowl much in the last 40 or 50 overs, but because of you bowled 150, does that increase the importance of what Watto's doing out in the nets at the moment, building up his bowling loads to be ready for Cape Town? Oh, we'd love five bowlers, as we've always said. Um, the hardest thing is fitting that in after a, a great test win and he hadn't bowled anything before this test match. So we've just got to see that he's getting along. He bowled today, as I said, so as you saw. So um, hopefully he's fit and fine and ready to go. Is it any more significant now, though, because of how long the innings went? Well, hopefully we don't have to bowl 150 in, in Cape Town and I'm pretty sure the Cape Town wicket won't be as, uh, won't have as less bounce as this one. <laughs> Just in terms of, uh, we, we know the brilliance of A.B. De Villiers, but a guy like J.P. Dooney was possibly under a bit of pressure in this, coming into this test match and the way he played. Could you just let played very well for number, number seven, though, was he? So he was number six last test match? Okay, played very well for number seven. <laughs> <laughs> um, just one, uh, a brick group up this morning. Um, Ryan and Mitchell both got pretty well with the new ball on day one. Is there any reason why they switched around? Just the wind, I think, mate, yeah. Uh, again, we don't try and fight the wind. We make sure we're trying to use it where we possibly can, so that's all. Yeah. Um, they fielded in this final session and in the second innings in the first test give you extra confidence that you can fight back to level terms here? Uh, very much so, yeah. We, we, I mean, for, uh, from our point of view, we've been in this situation probably too often, as Malcolm pointed out. So. We, we know what we need to do tomorrow, and tomorrow morning is going to be a, a very big, you know, first session for us, as it is for South Africa. So, you know, they're ahead of the game, as we know, and we've just got to get back into the game.